When learning Steno, you can easily become overwhelmed with the amount of options you have for different hardware. There are a vast number of regular keyboards, hobbyist machines, and even DIY keyboards. If you're not sure what to get, I will always recommend one of the hobbyist machines as they're easy to obtain and will meet the requirements for a good Steno keyboard. They're all exceptional at their job, and honestly, the best one you can buy at any given moment is one that is in stock. If you'd like to know a little more about your options, however, you may want to watch the rest of this video. First, I'll talk more about inexpensive Steno machines. Most people starting to learn Steno will try using a regular keyboard that probably doesn't even have N-key rollover. N-key rollover means that your keyboard is able to detect up to any number of key presses all at once. If we look at my laptop keyboard, it is quite bad in this regard. When I press down many keys, only a few are registered. This is quite bad for Steno as you will often have to press down many keys all at once. Most keyboards only have 6 key rollover, and you really need at least 9 to have a decent experience. That said, there are two workarounds to this problem. First, you can use the arpeggiate setting in Plover, which allows you to press each key individually before sending off the stroke using the spacebar. Secondly, you can also write each stroke in such a way that one key is always pressed throughout, as Plover does not receive a stroke until all keys have been released. Both of these methods can get around a keyboard without N key rollover, but they're slow and somewhat annoying. If you're just learning the Steno layout, these won't matter that much, but pretty soon you're going to want to get at least an N key rollover keyboard. Now, if you know for sure that you want to learn Steno, then you can get a hobbyist machine right away, like the ones I will discuss later. However, if you're unsure about if you even want to learn Steno, an N key rollover keyboard might be for you. They can be found fairly inexpensively, so don't spend too much money for the perfect keyboard, especially since there isn't much difference from one to another when it comes to Steno. A more expensive N key rollover keyboard will not be any better than a cheap one. Now, to make coding a little easier on one of these mechanical keyboards, you can flip the top row of keycaps so that the gap between the top and bottom row of keys is a little bit smaller. And if you're experienced with 3D printing, you can also print some custom keycaps called steno toppers. These are great since they align the top and bottom rows. So now, how are N key rollover keyboards less ideal for steno? Well, first of all, they come with really heavy springs in their key switches. If you're writing a word like grind, you will have to press down 12 keys all at once. On a keyboard with 60 gram springs, that's 720 grams of weight you're pressing down with your wrists. There just aren't any inexpensive regular keyboards that come with lighter springs. You really want something with 35 grams at the heaviest. Now secondly, the Steger makes it quite uncomfortable to steno on even with the top row of keycaps flipped. Both of these factors mean that you're not going to be very fast. When I used an N key rollover keyboard, I could only do short bursts of 120 words per minute before my wrists started to ache. With steno toppers, I was sometimes able to reach 150 words per minute, but again, the spring weight was a substantial limiting factor. For the long run, you're going to want to get a hobbyist machine that's designed for steno with a better layout and lighter switches. At time of this video's release, there is the Eco Seno, the Multi Seno, the Georgie, the Splitography, the Tiny Mod, and the Uni. As I've mentioned before, if you're not sure what to buy, your best bet will be getting the one that is in stock at the moment. All of these are great keyboards, and you really won't gain much from waiting for one in particular. However, I do have to caution you against purchasing a Georgie at this moment. Unfortunately, the creator has been away for a little while, and we haven't heard much from her. She has been going through tough times, and we're not even sure if orders are getting through. Some people have been waiting for a Georgie for almost a year. Now, if you're still not sure which keyword you want to purchase, I'll go over a few factors you should take into consideration. When it comes to spring weights, the lightest of them all is the Georgie at 12 grams. Next, the Eco Seno, as well as the Multi Seno, are a bit heavier at 20 grams. The Uni and the Tiny Mod both come with 35 gram springs, but you can get a more expensive version of the Tiny Mod with 20 gram springs. And finally, the Splitography is the heaviest of them all at 40 grams. The heavier version of the Tiny Mod, as well as the Uni and the Splitography, are all compatible with lighter aftermarket springs. You can buy these replacement springs and replace the stock ones. That said, spring swapping, especially on the splitography, is a bit tricky, and it is possible to break a few switches if you're not careful. 
Peter has a video guide for the uni, which will also work with the tiny mod since they both use Gateron clear switches. In addition to spring weight, you're also going to want to have a look at the keycaps. The stock keycaps on the Georgie Eco Seno and Multi Seno are all quite good. When I used my Georgie, I had absolutely no problem with the keycaps. That said, others have mentioned that MBK keycaps are a fair bit better for recording than the stock ones. Now the Uni comes with OEM profile keycaps, and are fine for the most part, but are quite tricky when trying to press TD or SZ. If you find these stock keycaps are hard to use, I'd recommend getting a set of F10 profile keys. They are very flat, and the gap between each key is less than a few millimeters. The Tiny Mod can also benefit from some F10 keys, but I've heard that the stock G20 keycaps are quite sufficient already. The only machine that isn't compatible with third-party keycaps is the Splitography. But it already comes with some really nice custom injection molded keycaps, which I don't have many complaints with. Now, one last aspect I want to talk about, one that sets several boards apart, is the mounting capability. Professional center machines are almost always mounted on tripods as they make it really easy to relax your arms and keep your elbows bent at right angles. If you find that putting a Seno keyboard on a table is not very comfortable, you may want to check out tripod mounting. The Eco Seno and Multi Seno have a quarter inch nut on the bottom that lets you mount the board to a camera tripod quite easily, while the other hobbyist machines require some DIY method of tripod mounting. The Uni and the Tiny Mod are the next easiest, only requiring a foam tripod mount, while the Splitography and the Georgie require some more custom setups. You could also try lap steno, which is exactly what it sounds like. I find putting a steno machine on my lap quite comfortable, and almost as good as using a regular tripod. Obviously, this isn't going to be as easy with split keyboards, as you're going to have to find a board to put the two halves on. Here's a table to summarize some of the aspects I've mentioned. In my opinion, these are the most important, and anything else doesn't matter nearly as much. Julia from the Plover Discord server has also compiled a much more comprehensive table regarding things like connector type, protocol, and other miscellaneous aspects. Up until now, I haven't talked about any DIY steno hardware. I've never soldered more than a few Arduino projects, and I've never designed a PCB before, so I can't really speak to this option very much. Of course, if you've built a keyboard before, you probably already know what you're doing. However, one DIY option I think is pretty accessible to most people would be the plank from Drop. The plank is an ortholinear keyboard, meaning that the keys are aligned in a grid with absolutely no stagger. A DIY kit will cost you about $110. This does not include switches or keycaps, which will set you back another $40 or so. I'd recommend getting F10 keycaps for the minimal gap, and Gatoron clear switches for the lightweight. So far, I have also neglected to mention lever machines such as Stenturas. I'm not too familiar with these, but I still don't think most people would find one of these terribly useful. The main benefit of lever machines is that pressing down multiple keys is not significantly heavier than just pressing down one. But I don't think this outweighs the fact that they tend to be more expensive, usually a few hundred dollars used, and are also more bulky and less portable. That said, if you do manage to find one for a decent price, it might be worth it. Just make sure that it is an electric model that is capable of connecting to a computer. And that's about all I have to say for Steno hardware. If you've made it this far, thanks for sticking around. I hope I've shed some light on the weird little keyboards we use for Steno. As always, let me know your thoughts on the subject. I'd love to know what you think makes a good Steno keyboard. And with that, that's all for me, and I'll see you next time.